You're now listening to Sound Talent Media. Check out more shows at SoundTalentMedia.com. Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm Matt Migaki, the vocalist of Cryptopsy and the host of the Vox and Hops Metal Podcast, where I sit down with fellow metal musicians. We talk all about their lives and music while sharing killer craft beers. If you've ever wanted to sneak backstage and share a beer with one of your favorite musicians, well, Vox and Hops is the podcast for you. This week on the podcast, I dropped a killer episode with Kelly Schaefer of Atheist. There is this episode and over 440 other ones to help you enjoy life, metal, and craft beer. So what are you waiting for? It's time to become a Vox and Hops head. Cheers! Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. That's two this week. Oh, baby, have we cracked? No, no, not at all. Not at all. This is a special bonus episode with my buddies Chris Benson and Brian Fallon. This was actually Brian's idea. He wanted to come on the podcast again, and he wanted to do it in tandem with a gear builder. And so I got with Chris, and we made it happen. This is actually the third time that each of these guys have been on the Tone Mob podcast. So if you haven't had a chance to go look at their previous, go look at, listen to their previous interviews, conversations, etc., now might be a good time to go revisit that. But this was an epic chat. We had a lot of fun nerding out about gear, talking about old man stuff, and just, you know, just guys being dudes. We had a real fun time, and I think you will enjoy it as well. It's also worth noting that the patrons of the podcast, those that are supporting on Patreon, got to hear this early. So, yeah, they got to chew on this last week, along with their normal weekly bonus episode. So, yeah, if you can, patreon.com slash tone mob, where for five bucks a month, you can get extra episodes beamed right to your ears every week along with early peaks at things like this. So, if you can, that's much appreciated. And if you can't, I totally get it. Please just uh, share this with a friend. But, without further ado, let's get into this conversation. I'll stop blabbering so you can hear more blabbering. Here we go. Man. Yeah, I I think it's very beautiful, but I'm I'm happy that I'm out here now. <laughs> you switched the beautiful for more beautiful. It's it's kind of different beautiful. Every time we go back there, um main, it's mainly the like the old houses back there I think are yeah. super cool. And they don't like develop, you know, everything to the utmost developability of it, um, yeah. which is what they do out here. It's like kind of nuts. There was it's when insane. I went to I like recorded my last record in Connecticut and it was at uh, that guy, Peter Cadis, the studio is a house. It's an old, one of those old mansions that it got. And I like, I kind of walked in there and was like, dude, like, you know, I know the nationals popular, but you got to be loaded. And he's like, no, 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 no. He's like, these are, these are very, very cheap. What you get in a house. And, and he was in uh Bridgeport and, and it was kind of like old, you know, like it was a little spooky, but uh, it was, not as expensive as you would have thought. And, and it was a really big mansion. Nice. Cool. Not mansion. I mansion's too heavy of a word. It's big. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's kind of weird man. out here. It's starting to be like, you know, it's like, Hey, you want a house like a regular house? Cool. That'll be $700,000 or something. Seven hundred. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least in the Portland area it gets a little cheaper if you get out to the burbs but it's it's nutty i'm just glad yeah. that i got in when i got in that's all yeah I me say. too me too well i didn't get in so thanks <laughs> for the thanks for the invite what do i gotta work at thunder road guitars to get an invite out there uh, i mean i'm sure they would let you I'm or sure what's the uh, what's who else is out there everybody out there makes something like if you live in the upper you know the pacific northwest you you have to make some kind of guitar pedal or or amp or or sell them or whatever or talk about them on the internet it's a thing it's a thing <laughs> i don't understand nobody in new york does anything cool anymore that's because all the new york people moved to nashville it seems like, like i don't know all about the builders nashville. anyway i, I feel yeah. like it's it's got to be the weather i mean we we have su- such a long dark rainy season 
I mean, that's yeah. probably why I got into it. You just kind of like bored sitting in your basement, <laughs> like <laughs> so, soldering, soldering a bunch of things together. It's like, that's you know, all right. There's nothing else to do. I, I, I enjoy that. That's a good pastime. <clears throat> Yeah, it's a uh, it, it's weird around here though. Chris, would you agree with me that like in the last ten ish years, our weather has like gotten milder and better than it was previously? So I I was in Seattle. Uh, <clears throat> I, I moved to Portland I, almost ten years ago now. Um, but I was in Seattle beforehand, and I, I get kind of confused because Seattle seems to be a little bit milder than than portland in general um Mm -hmm. so it it actually just seems like the same as seattle when i was living there so i don't know i I guess it's it's confusing but i i've I've heard that like my wife's from here and she said that it's it's like way milder now yeah i've been here my whole life and and that's that's my viewpoint on it i'm like man we're we're starting to like horn in on like almost ideal weather conditions for me like don't tell anybody. Maybe we should stop talking about it. The house prices will go up more. Well, know. we can just talk about the ice tornado. <laughs> and the firestorm. <laughs> fire what? Ice tornado. <laughs> yeah, um, we had a pretty gnarly ice. Well, before that, we had in 2020, uh, we had a, a really intense fire event in the Willamette Valley that we don't normally see. A lot of people are like, oh, the West Coast does that all the time. And it's like, not here. It, that, that my grandpa's 80 he's lived here his whole life and he said he's never seen that in his whole life um and then we had a giant like just here what how long ago was it chris like a month and a half ago the ice, yeah, i think it was about a month and a half two months yeah like we had a horrible like freezing rain event and it just brought down all the trees like like a third of the trees just fell over and everyone was out of power about the same time texas was going through all their stuff we were we were experiencing the same thing to a little lesser degree, I think. So yeah. What did you do? What did you do? Do you did you do something? I mean, you specifically. Uh, did you do something wrong, and that's what happened? What, what did you? You got an ice tornado? <laughs> <laughs> did you like yeah. the? It's like like mosaical. What do you say? Mosaical? Is that it? Like a plague? <laughs> you, know, you can just call it Old Testament, I guess. Old, Old Testamentical. <laughs> my, my my neighbor was during the ice storm he he was joking and he was like what is that sound i'm like what are you talking about and he's like i hear a buzzing sound i'm like i don't hear anything he's like are those locusts i'm like oh geez, not <laughs> dude. <laughs> i love a good plague joke <laughs> i mean not when it's a real plague but when it's like a a plague that, or no nah, i guess it's a real plague but a plague that is since passed is that's fine you know yeah like a exactly. yeah it's a different kind of thing what have you been up to, Brian? I know you've been doing uh, a little live streaming here and there and like painting walls and stuff, but what else have you been doing? Uh well, yeah, I painted the house in the beginning of the the whole thing. And then um uh yeah, live streams. Uh well, now I'm making a record in my house. So nice. it's yeah. But but uh, I should warn you, I don't know how to make a record. So I'm learning as I go, which is uh very hard. But I'm doing it. So, and it, it's going good. It's sounding good. It sounds of quality, which is, that's all I was kind of hoping for. That's awesome. Yeah. I yeah. just, uh, I just, you got some gear you want to send me, anybody, Blake? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'll send I, it hey, back. I got this, uh, <laughs> Telecaster custom sitting here with a nice I, wide range humbucker. Nah, I don't like those. <laughs> There's no, yeah, no business either. with a humbucker right. going on in a, in a Telecaster. I got a couple of, couple here but yeah that's what i've been doing just that and then practicing lots of practicing uh what else that's pretty much it i got i, I got some new microphones i'm learning about ribbon mics because i got this one uh stager uh is a, is a company they're in uh nashville and oh, yeah, those got, are cool yeah super cool this guy matt uh is he He's, uh, I guess he's building them by himself and uh, or with a couple of people that he works with. But the uh, Chris Masterson uh, said, hey, you, you should get this mic. I said, well, I think I'm going to get that mic. And it wasn't crazy expensive. So I emailed Matt and he was like, here, I can get you one. Uh, and and uh, I mean, I paid for it, but I was like, okay. And then he sent it to me and it sounds really good, really good. 
What are you using it for? Uh, guitars. Vocals. Okay. Some vocals, yeah. Um, I I learned a new thing by accident the other day that you have to record vocals when you're. So if you're harmonizing with yourself, you got to record it on different microphones, or else you get that phasey thing. So that's you know you know you know when you're recording a guitar and then they, in the studio they'd always be like, okay, try a different guitar or plug it into a different amp. And I always thought that was annoying. Why? Mm-hmm. I like this one. Now I understand why. Because and not in a cool way. Like in oh, a bad way, sure. you know what I I'm saying? Us. It's it's I mean, weird. I, I I do that with the, uh, you know, the, like there's the reason I use certain like stereo pedals the way I do when I'm running stereos because I find that sometimes when I'm just doing like a like certain effects I've found they they say they're stereo and they're like not really, and that kind of can cause some of that same issue too. And that's oh yeah. That's kind of weird, you know. It's it's a weird thing. You have to run two packs. <clears throat> I think your your guy, right, the Mister Black, he he figured mm-hmm. that out, and a couple oh, other yeah, people. Oh yeah, Jack's big on that. In fact, I, the, his Tape X two is like, that's like my favorite stereo pedal. I love that thing so much. Mm. So it's two outputs at the same time. It's two, it's two outputs, and they're two specific, distinct signal paths instead of like I. I think I sent you that article. Everybody should read that. It's a little bit uh, strongly worded, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I did. I did read that. I read that. No, no, I, I read that. I thought that that was it. I found that funny. <laughs> yep. But, That's Jack. That's our boy, Jack. But Chris yes. and I both know him really well. So. All right. So, dude. but then is that the same thing as Chris when you have your, so like, say when you're running your, your, your channels here and you got. They they tie up together. They're out of phase, and then the phase inverter throws them in phase, or vice versa. And that's not the same thing, though, is it? No, no. So what a phase inverter is does it does it doesn't really do anything to the phase that you can that you can hear. Okay. Um, but so so power tubes, you know, in a push pull amp, which is any amp that has like a an even number of tubes, usually. Um or even number of power tubes. Uh, so one side of the power amp needs to be fed, you know, say, you know, it's a, let's call it the A phase. Um, and then the other side needs to be fed like a signal completely out of phase. And so they're on, it's kind of weird. It's sort of like a seesaw, but it's, yeah. it's doing the, uh, the, you, you have to have the, the, the weight on both sides balanced in order for it to be like a symmetrical, you know, fun time. Like a push, <laughs> push pull, would you say? Yeah. Yeah. Push, pull. I, I know that makes sense as a, as opposed to the other single ended where it's just one of those guys. All right. So it's not the same, but you know, not quite, it's a thing. It's a thing. Th- there is a, there is some interesting circuitry out there that, that has fun with phase. For instance, a super fuzz uh, and all the variants, you know, the, the kind of like Japanese uh, fuzz design back in the day, what they did, and this is insane because it sounds so violent. They, uh, they took two signals that are out of phase. Um, so like basically a power, a power amp, and then they ran them into each other. So they completely phase canceled other than all of the harmonics and garbage, like the, all, all the, uh, all the stuff that wasn't perfect in the signal. And so that's really all you're hearing. Is all that's the imperfections, and then they clip that with diodes, and then they run it through like an insane EQ, and that's why super fuzzes basically sound like a war because it's two signals out of phase fighting with each oh, other. Okay, that makes so much right, sense right. now. Like because I've always wondered, like listen, I love a super fuzz; it's a lot of fun. But I, it totally has that sound, that out of phase. Like that when you get a phase cancellation, you know how you you just things just all of a sudden disappear. Like I didn't understand that that's what it was doing, but I get it now. That's that's see knowledge bombs over here. Yeah, Who, whoever yeah. came up with that circuit is a maniac. <laughs> <laughs> this is that's that's what that's what you we're learning about though. It's, it does weird things. Uh, uh, oh hey, I uh, uh, I have over. I've caused the microphone to feedback with my own voice. Apparently that's, that's new. Um, that, so yeah, I'm learning about that. 
pulling frequencies out that are way up high at, at you know, bat level of hearing. <laughs> like way higher than that, though. I, I got so, okay. So, you know, you listen to things on headphones, right? Everybody does. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I have, you know, I like I was using like Beats headphones or whatever for, for a long, long time. Then I decided, okay, if I'm going to make a serious record, I got to get some monitors. So I found these like headphones that are monitor like headphones, like studio headphones. And I was like, well, let's, let's see. So I, I got them and I put them on. And you know how some people are like, yeah, well, you know, if you like, you put a like a point oh oh one cap and a point oh cap uh, or oh one cap in there, and it sounds totally different, man. Night and day difference. So it's not. It's not difference. Um, this is different. This is night and day. And I, it felt like my head came off, like when I put my glasses on, <laughs> and 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 I was like, there are frequencies here that are like. I want to instantly, immediately remove my headphones. And and then I started to realize that's why when you listen to something and it's, it sort of sounds harsh and it's like what they, that, that ear fatigue. And now I actually can hear in like a tangible way what that is. And it's sort of weird because I want to plug it into other stuff now. And like, I want to plug these monitors into like an amp or like whatever, mm-hmm. a pedal and see what's going on. Cause you hear these things that are insane and like, you know, you have to like pinpoint one frequency and you go searching for it with this little mute thing. So it just mutes everything except for whatever frequency you're doing right at that mm-hmm. point. And you, you search for it. And then all of a sudden you're like, nothing, nothing <laughs> like really loud. And you're like, Oh my God. And then it's like the plague of locusts, but inside your head. <laughs> what, what so that's head- my life. Oh, they're, they're, they're these Neumann, uh, headphones that they, they came out with. Uh, they're called, uh, NDH 20s and they're, 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 uh, like closed off headphones and they're insane. I dare you to put them on, (laughs) but every record you love, you'll hate now because you'll be like, unless they're really good ones. So you can tell if a record sounds good, you put these things on and you're like, wow, you know, that sounds incredible. Hmm. And then other things you're just like terrible. I, I need to step up my headphone game, so maybe I'll get some. I, These I, are not. I usually, it's I'm not sorry. for like every. It's not for like you don't want to like do this with everyday listening. It's not that kind of. You know what I mean? Oh man, no. I I like I engineer records and stuff. I I, I do mixing. So oh, but now I, you do want to get them. I do want to <laughs> get them. Oh yeah, I, I've I've only I only have like four project studios spread around town. <laughs> this is wild stuff. So you know what I'm talking about then. Oh, I, 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 yeah, I've been engineering. You, yeah. And, yeah. Well, you should have, you should have, I, I mean, it's very rude not to offer your help with, you know, <laughs> since you, you knew I was struggling and you didn't know it all. <laughs> no, I just don't like, I don't like interrupting, man. <laughs> Dude, so you're, you're an engine. That's very classy though. I, I appreciate that. So you, you've been, you making records too. You making amps records. Well, what don't you do? Um, I, I'm not super employable other than with guitar amplifiers. Love that. <laughs> <laughs> me neither. Me neither. <laughs> that's cool and wow i don't know, what else. I, I, don't know. I i have i have a family that's pretty much all i do my, yeah. my life is music and music and family and that's pretty much it well that's cool You're working on a record right now aren't you chris uh yeah yeah me i have a band with uh dan phelps um he's uh this musician i've known forever in seattle um, yes. And yeah, we have like a, a fun, like kind of nineties dad rock project happening called, called Molter. And I think there might be one song on the internet somewhere, but we're kind of finishing off a full length and squabbling over details. Um, I did a, I did a hardware mix of it over the weekend, um, using a, a little Yamaha PM 1000 board and, uh, some compressors and whatnot. And, now we're arguing about whether or not it sounds good, which is all part of the process. <laughs> oh, that's the way, though. You gotta, you gotta argue about it. What do you? All right. Well, what do you like for a? Uh, what do you like for a, a, a vocal mic that's not twenty thousand dollars? Um, that's really funny. You should, you should bring that up <laughs> because Why? I because I, I just got a U sixty seven. Oh man, a, a real one. Oh, get out of it. I, I went in, in on it with a 
with, with a friend as like an investment and also, you know, I just love you 67s a lot. So, Oh my goodness. A it's not one. stored at my shop. So no one break into the shop. It's not no there. Um, good. yeah. Uh, but I usually when I'm at home, um, I'll, I'll just use an SM seven B, uh, because they just sound fantastic. And I'm sure you've used those. those yeah. Before. Yeah, that's a that's a good you know set it and free edit microphone for me. That into a nice preamp. That's cool. That's very cool. Wow, that was pretty penny there. You got to be taking care of, careful of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it, well, let, let's just say I don't drive nice cars. <laughs> I, I, uh, uh, all, I all of my the money. Astro van was really nice. The Astro van was dope. Okay. I Remember like when it. when I was driving that and the wheel literally fell off while I was talking to you. I do. Uh, I do. On a hands-free we on, device. Yeah, we were on the phone, uh, I, and he, he, we were talking about, I don't know, whatever we talk about. We talk about all kinds of things, and all of a sudden, he's like, uh, I gotta go. Uh, I'm like, what's going on? He's like, I think my wheel just fell off. <laughs> I was like, you oh. think your wheel just <laughs> fell off? <laughs> yeah, you better go. <laughs> this is all right. Good stuff. Yeah. A wheel. Yep. Yeah, who needs a wheel? Man, oh man! Got three, <laughs> three more. <laughs> yeah, but as, everyone as was like, Mike, don't, "Don't you think you should get rid of that?" <laughs> no, they they were able to put it back on. <laughs> oh my goodness! I, yeah, they, yeah, they take them off, put them on. I, I hear that they, they they're interchangeable. <laughs> Just a couple bolts, move them right around. Sometimes yeah, they rotate them. Oh my gosh, that was insane! Oh, well, that's 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 cool. This is this is good stuff. I'm learning all this all this all this stuff. What, what do you use on your vocals? Uh nothing classy like that. Um well, I got the SM7's good. Uh oh, yeah. the Stager is good, the new one. I've been using uh the the Neumann TLM 103 for a long time. Oh, those uh, are great. They're okay. They're pretty good. I th- you know what I ha- I'm going to be honest with you they're better than I they're better than I'm I'm going to I'm going to say cuz I'm trying to I know it's not like a ball or a microphone but it's it's different it's definitely been good to me over the years um I'm getting the uh, a U87 now oh, so we'll cool. see whether that sounds good or not that's what people told me is good nice is it good yeah uh, it's a new one though it's not an old one like is it a Neumann branded one or yeah, Neumann a U87. Nice. So I I hope it, it it should be okay. I think it'll be good. Better than good, I think. It's it's kind of hard to screw those up, honestly. Like there's I think they're just like a fet driving a transformer. Yeah, type thing. Uh, they and did like, the Good. I'm oh, sorry. Oh, and the you know, they use the same capsule as the U67. They just wanted to make a a cheaper fet version of it uh that was more reliable and didn't need a giant power supply. Did you see the 47 they did with a FET in it? Um, I was aware that there's a FET 47, but yeah, I, I, I've I never know. used one. Yeah, I didn't know about that one. I saw it, and I was kind of like, oh, should I get that one? But then I was like, I don't know about that. I'm like, I'm not sure. They, uh, they use know. those on, that's like, I think, standard for outside kick drum, like to, to kind of pick up sub frequencies in front of the kick drum. Okay. You know what sounds cool, though? One ribbon mic on a drum kit. That sounds cool. I, I agree, man. <laughs> I, I was not aware that that sounds as cool as it does. Yeah. And it really sounds cool. So where do you place it? Uh, you got to move it around, but up like up mm-hmm. in like, oh, a- like angled down. Yeah. I'm learning a lot of cool tricks. I mean, Chris already knows these, so it's not, but there, I nah, just dude, learned. I'm, I'm like a hobbyist. Um, oh yeah. I, yeah, I, I wouldn't. I would not say that I'm a professional level engineer, but I, I just love sound and I love music and I love recording. So yeah. I'm just like one of those guys who reads the forums and then tries buys all the cheap stuff and realizes it doesn't work and then goes the level up and just kind of keeps going from there. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm just like, like an enthusiast. <laughs> that sounds like everything I've ever done with gear. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> You're like you start at the bottom. Well, can I get away with this? Yep, and then yep. that didn't work. So one level up. And then you, you know, then pretty soon you're forty thousand dollars in debt. But yeah. uh, just kidding, because yeah. I can't, I, I can't do that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> but the I, well, go ahead, Blake. Oh no, I was just gonna say I am. I'm the same way. I just sent this last record out after I got done putting my super novice mix on it, 
and I sent it to the mastering guy or a mastering guy. And he was like, you know, honestly, I can't do much with this. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, okay. He's like, well, it's so loud already. And he's like, I just don't really have much room to work. He's like, there's a few little things I can do, but he's like, it's not going to make a big difference. Uh, because you maxed everything out already and didn't leave me any room to work. I'm like, oh, well, I don't know what I'm doing. So that's probably why I did that. Uh, that's, uh, that's just what I did. But yeah, I, I have no idea what I'm doing either. And I have people asking me how I did certain things. I'm like, well, I just kind of put the mic there and, uh, there you go. That's what happened. You know, I don't really know what I'm doing. I think it's okay to leave mastering engineers little to no room to over compress stuff. Yeah, probably. They, there's like the this the, the the like digital school of thought like going around. They seem to want to suggest you you leave a lot of room um, because I, they were saying like back in the day that, that like when they were using all analog consoles that there was a lot of headroom. Like even after you thought you were hitting like the maximum or starting to clip, like even beyond that, there was a whole nother. Uh, sort of unseen level of headroom in there. So like, Mm -hmm. that's not the case now. And a lot of people feed the, like, you know, if you're using like whatever, like a plugin or UAD or something that like the plugin zero, you know, if you, if you are hitting that and then going up into like negative six and nine and, and and like, it's really not as much as you think. And so you you probably want to keep it a little below that so that it's not, uh, clip it on the other end and like did like digital distortion, which is gross. Mm-hmm. So that's what, that's what I've been reading. I didn't think of that, nor do I have a backing up opinion on that. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, the I headroom thing up, is weird. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, yeah, I just ended up uh, having my guy, Nick, who does all the stuff for the podcast. He ended up taking it and running it through some really fancy plugins and, and, uh, just kind of added a little bit of sparkle to it. And I was like, yeah, that is a little better. So we went with that. That's the way, but I don't really know exactly what he did. So who knows? Now you can kind of not master it yourself. Yeah, you can, you can master it yourself. Kind of. If you get like a good couple things here and there, you can make it pretty loud. You just got to make sure it's not too loud. Cause it, I, I read that Spotify and Apple music will uh, sort of not play things if they're too loud mm-hmm. oh, that's true is that true I, I think i think they'll like i mean I, i'm just talking about on my you know but i think that they actually will will bring it down in level and expand it a little bit um okay just so it kind of matches the same like intensity as everything else um that way like yeah. you know your song comes on it's not like eight decibels louder than everything else um which is which makes Spotify look bad. <laughs> so can that cause any problems? I'm sorry. Can that cause any problems? What like, sonically with whatever processing they do on it? I, I yeah, I mean, people talk about those problems and how to get around them um, quite a bit. I I'm not you know I don't mix stuff for for Spotify because I'm not like a big commercial you know engineer guy, um, but. I, I I know I've I've read some articles here and there where people are talking about how to actually master stuff so it fits in well with uh, Spotify's like AI algorithm or whatever. Yeah, yeah I, I'm uh, going to get in big trouble for the next thirty seconds of not even fifteen seconds of what I'm going to say. The, I I am the, probably one of the only artists I could care less ever ever about streaming or any of it. I know that that's not good for me to say, but I just don't like it. And I don't think it's fair and I, I don't consider what they want. And I don't, I just don't care. Like, I think that it, fortunately, like I've managed to keep like an audience that, that buys stuff, um, which is cool. Uh, but like, I just feel like that game is not for me. I don't like it. And I don't, I don't even, I don't know what to say about it or back it at all. Is there, is it better for you at all now that you are, Pretty much doing everything on your own through your own label and everything. Yeah, a million percent. You know what? Like, I think it depends on your goals. And I think, like, I, I, I know that you know, Chris, you can relate to this from you know a sales point of view. uh, Is that like it's it's just not better sometimes to be like 
the biggest one or sell the most or have the most stuff or like, it's just, I think that like, if, if you can manage what you're doing on a level that allows you freedom to do Mm -hmm. the other things you want to do to me, you could put uh, like a line of Ferraris in front of me and I wouldn't care at all if I have what I have now, which is just complete and total freedom. Like I have the freedom to record at home and like people are like the late, like, you know, I work with a label, uh, 30 tigers who distributes my stuff, but like they leave me alone and they're just like, yeah, we, you, you're going to do it. Yeah. You're going to record a record. All right. Great. Yeah. We're, we're in. I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay, cool. And then there's <laughs> not, that's it. Like you can't buy that, you know? Oh yeah. It seems like a lot of people are, are going to 30 tigers for that reason. That seems to be their move, right? Like that's their big thing. And a friend of mine, uh, Scott actually from string joy, he, he used to work there back in the day and it's kind of like, explain their business model and i'm like man that just makes more sense for everybody i think yeah i mean it's a it's a fair it's a fair deal which i mean as a musician we have a fair deal i don't think that we we there's not been a fair deal since since the 20s for you know for musicians i mean i unless you're mega successful like if you're if you're like metallica you can dictate you know you can tell your manager you're only going to give him five percent or whatever you know but you can't do that when you're anyone else. And I think that, you know, the whole business of, of life side one was very fair like that too. I will say that, that, you know, like li- licensing records and like, you know, giving your records back and, and splitting the records and stuffing like stuff like that, like that, that's fair and that's cool. And it, yeah, it's, it's just awesome. I, I haven't heard of, of what is it? 30 tigers. Yeah, they they do well. See, because they're quiet about it. Like they 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 are a label sort of, but they're like more of a distribution company and a partner for other for artists and the art uh-huh. each. So like each artist that's on the label has their own label, and then you so you handle everything. You got to deal with everything, um, like even manufacturing CDs and stuff. But they help with every aspect of it. So hmm. they help as much as you want them to, and then they stay out of it. Uh, as much as you want them to as well. But like, you know, like Lucinda Williams and Jason Isbell and all these people are on uh, this label and uh, it's not really a label, but it it is kind of. Um, And that, that, that's who, uh, that's who I I moved to when I left uh, the major label, who I will say was in my experience was very kind to me, uh, but you know, a different scenario. Mm -hmm. Man, sounds, sounds awesome. Yeah. I was completely unaware. Yeah. It's awesome. It's really cool. Just been dipping my toe into the you know the uh, vinyl side of things, not from a listening side, but from a like getting one made. I'm like, oh, I put way too much low end in my record for this to work on vinyl. (laughs) 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 And and like uh, learning uh, learning about that process, it's you know if there's a lot of it's a lot more available than it used to be. Like that used to be like, oh boy, there's there's not very many vinyl places, you know, and now that that equipment's been met, you know, being made again, it's like, there's a place here in Portland called cascade pressing that does it. And there's places oh, yeah. in, I found a place in Kentucky that does it. That is pretty reasonable. And like, I'm like, Oh wow. Like, I don't think this was the case. Like even like five to seven years ago, I think it was still kind of, kind of a monopoly in some ways. I don't know. Have, have you, you been seen? over to cascade? I haven't been there yet. No. It's super cool, man. It's it's really really cool. I'd recommend going over there and getting a tour if you can. I would I would like to. That's who I'm planning on using for this thing, and I want them. To, I want to see how they make those purple vinyls that I'm trying to order. <laughs> so, <laughs> ah, cool. It's cool. That's how wax. Yeah. <laughs> Pour it in. Cool there, stuff. Push it down. It's like it's Jack White's Christmas. <laughs> That's how they do it. They do it. He sits there in his uh in his in his tower and 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 makes vinyl. I love it. I love this stuff. I feel like we ha we kinda owe him a, a debt of gratitude a little bit for helping prop that up when it wasn't really the thing to do, you know? It he, he kinda made it cool again in in the more mainstream fashion, I feel like. I would agree with that. And I think he didn't he do something where he like bought when it when it was like fading into obscurity, I feel like he bought a pressing plant like early on and like kept it going. I think he did. 
Yeah, that sounds that, that third man records. I'm I'm not a, like a huge Jack White person. I don't know a lot about it. I know that. I know like the peripheral. You know that that he did that, and and that's about it. I know I finally caught him in concert in 2019, and you know he's a he's Jack White for a reason. That was pretty awesome. <laughs> like that, yeah, he, that dude puts on a show. It was fantastic. Yeah, I bet. I mean, anytime I've seen like a, a video of him playing live, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, you know, uh, Cat uh, Cat Popper used to play with him, and she would tell me stories all the time and be like, "Oh yeah, like he, he was." She always said he was super nice, which I, I like to hear that. Like he treated everybody mm-hmm. really kindly on his crew and his, you know, like the guitar techs and everybody. Like he, he was always like fair and you know and gave like you know, lots of people jobs and just was really cool about that. And I, I thought that that, you know, that was enough for me to think he was cool. Yeah. That's, that's great to hear. Too. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, maybe he'll give me a job one day, you know, <laughs> you can be there <laughs> pressing records. <laughs> I just, I want to be the one who paints everything bumblebee colors. Yeah. <laughs> I love, I would love that if that was my gig. Like, Hey, what do you do? I, you know, I just paint stuff yellow and black for Jack just White. It's long. cool. Yeah. No big deal. NBT, right? <laughs> Sounds like a fun gig. It's, it wouldn't be a bad gig. That's the kind of gigs. That's my dream stuff is just like, you know, doing something fun and funny. I like fun and funny. That's what my thing is. <laughs> I, I was kind of thinking of what Ben Sinamp's mission statement was this morning. <laughs> and, and I actually came up with basically tone and jokes. Yeah. <laughs> tone and jokes and that's it like anything outside tone and jokes like it's just not part of what we do yeah that, that's that cool seems pretty pretty accurate yeah i mean i've been you know chris and i've been friends for a long time and and i can attest to that is the most accurate statement that i can think of to describe that company and that organization is tone and jokes and uh <laughs> They're not always jokes that land with everybody, but they're all, they always land with me. And that's what <laughs> best, <matters>. kind. <laughs> best kind of joke. The, yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's been, it's been cool. Blake and I were, were talking a lot about, uh, about your, your company. And Blake was telling me all about the amps and the, the experience that I have is with the pedals and whatever Celise does online. I watch all of those religiously. I'm hoping that she'll hire me one day too. So just to, I'll do whatever. I don't care. I'll organize the shoes. Oh, I can man. Do that. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I can I do that. I would work for Celise. I hope she she becomes bigger than John Mayer, and then I could just go on tour with her and fix her amps. I would think that she is well on her way to being, like, the 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 next, like, I mean, she she really is a, a, a great player and, and, and a really nice person, too, which is cool. Yeah, she's she, hits, she she's hits amazing. all the marks. Like Chris told me, he you know he's done this a couple times, but specifically with Celise, I was just like doing my thing at home, and Chris texts me or called me, and he's like, "Hey, you need to come to the shop." I'm like, and this is I don't know two years ago, maybe a little bit longer, and I'm like, "Why?" He's like, "Oh, Celise is here," and I'm like, "I don't know who Celise is," and <laughs> no, and he's like, "Well, then come to the shop and find out who Celise is," and I visit there and like met her you know shook her hand oh hey how's it going we talked a little bit and then chris was like doing like he had to like run a business or something like he had to like work and so salise and i were just talking <laughs> and uh and she she was asking me about the vincent and like well i'm pretty intimately familiar with that and so i was kind of describing how it worked and and everything and she was like, well, how do you set yours? You know, how, how do you set the dials? I'm like, well, this is the great thing about Chris's stuff is it doesn't really matter where you set the EQ. It's going to sound good. Uh, it never like goes too far one way or the other. And she's like, okay. And so she just kind of set it wherever. And it was kind of close to where I generally set mine. And she started ripping and it got done. And then I just looked at her and I'm like, I told her, I was like, yeah, it doesn't sound like that when I do it. Though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We are not the same. <laughs> no. Yeah. I, I found out about her when she was playing guitar for uh, Lizzo on SNL. Like mm-hmm. we were watching, there was like a, we, my wife and I go through these 
periods where we watch SNL for like a, like a month and then we don't watch it for like a year. And it just happened to be one of the periods where we were watching it and I, I turned it on and um. I I said to my wife, I was like, I was like, look at look at this guitar player. I was like, she's having a ball, you know. She's just like laughing and like ripping these cool licks and just like smiling. And I was like, that's like that's what I want to see when I when I watch someone play. I want to see them enjoying themselves, you know, like the, the, enough suffering. But th- this is this is a, a, an awesome thing. And, and my wife was like, yeah, this is really, that's really something. And I don't even remember, like, I don't remember anything, no offense to, to Lizzo, but I don't remember anything about the show except for Celise ripping it and just having, <laughs> she was so like, she just like, you know, I, you don't often see people like just take over a, a thing. And, and I, I, I don't know. I was, I was enamored with, with like, wow, like this is cool. Yeah. She, uh, she's something else. I- I I really I did a, an episode with her a while back, and I think like shortly after she moved to L.A., and I like learned all this stuff about it. Like I didn't know she was I knew she could sing like from her songs that she's put out, but like I didn't know she used to be on Broadway. Like she's just oh, one wow. of those people, you know, that can just do everything, and she just kills it. And it's like, ah, huh, I think I'm gonna go quit now. Ah, uh, but can she organize shoes as best as I can? I don't think so. <laughs> so she, she still might, needs me. So yeah. I work cheap. I got to split my days. I got another job painting stuff for Jack White, but I'll work it out. Yeah, we, <laughs> between her and Jack, we can figure yeah, this out. You'll be the, the best yellow and black spray and shoe organizing expert on the planet. Uh, you know there's a shoe for monday and not a shoe for tuesday you, you gotta you can't mix never shall the tuesday be the monday shoe there's a thing don't worry what about kind of that. shoes do you like brian me what i only wear one wear? pair of shoes i own one <laughs> one pair i have one it? pair of shoes it's a pair of uh van slip-ons because i am a grown-up and <laughs> i've had them for so long i think there's a pair of boots in my closet somewhere but I've had for many years, and then a probably a, 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 a like a desert boot kind of thing. Like a, what do you call those things? Like the, they're like suede the though. See, no, yeah. no, no. Like a like a suede, like the like the uh, like a like a Noel Gallagher shoe. Okay. Um, okay. But you can't you can't wear them outside. If it rains, you you get stains on them, so they stay in the closet. <laughs> so the shoe that I wear is a pair of Vans that I've had for a very long time uh, because nobody will give me any shoes. <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah. I don't know. I, I'm I'm on the tail end of my. I I either wear. I have a few. I like shoes. It's something that people may not know about me is I kind of like shoes. But I have like ones that I wear. You know, when I know it's you know like I'm not going to get them all messed up. But then I have my daily shoes, which are either Adidas Superstars or Sambas. Ooh, um, I like I'm Adidas. On the, I'm on the tail end of my Superstars. I'm on about a two year or year and a half cycle. Uh, shoot, cause I like kick them off and on and I wear them all day, every day. And I walk around yelling at people on the phone a lot. And so I really am hard on the one pair of daily shoes I have. And these, uh, these superstars are about toast. <sighs> yeah. Hey, hey, is my mic on? Yeah. Your mic's on? Yeah. Oh, great. Uh, sorry. This mute button on this app is not very descriptive. Um, this just turns color. I couldn't remember. So I wear black New Balance shoes that are like just super dad i i literally wear them because my parents it's not dad <laughs> shoes those are snapcase shoes that's right yeah snapcase? it's like snapcase. It's like uh when i yeah when i started going to shows that's what they have all the kids i would you'd see flying new balance on your head it, you know whoa there's a new balance <laughs> you know it's a hardcore show yeah yeah that, that makes sense ben ben for used to wear new balance yeah. uh that lines up that I mean, new New Balance really could stretch into all genres. I believe you could find it anywhere, you know. From whew, you could really go deep there, like anybody, all genres. New Balance. The, yours are the all black ones, though, Chris. Right? So you're like trying to keep it just like you're not you're not going for the white crispy boys, you know, where you're like, who wants to grill up a hot dog? Like you're, try- you're trying to do the <laughs> nobody <slowly>. eats <laughs> hot dogs in 2021. <laughs> yeah, my my mine are all black. Um, I don't, I don't know. It's it's kind of I don't know. I think they're kind of funny, which is the main reason I wear them. They're just like yeah, I knew that they just kind of look 
look a little gross. <laughs> is the N black too? The whole thing. Uh, yeah. I don't. I don't have them in front oh. of me. Are they on your feet? No. Oh. Uh, I'm man. barefoot right now. I don't know about you guys. I'm not even wearing pants to be honest. That's awesome. You. That's what podcasting's all about. <laughs> Why do I, I do it for a living? Because I don't have to wear clothes. It's great. Well, fair, 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 fair. What, what, what do you got? What do you got? You, you're not going to work today. Or are you going to work today? You guys still go to work? Uh, yeah, I, I, I have like a little, little office in my basement oh. that I. Most of my work these days is just on a computer, like designing stuff in CAD or writing. Emails. That's cool. So I, and since you know we're pandemicking uh, still, uh, I just try to stay here and and don't. I only go to work when I yeah. need to. So you're you're pretty backed up there, aren't you? Uh, y- yes and no. So w- what we've been doing, yeah, we're backed up. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. I meant that in a good way. Like, no, no, I, I, I'll take it. Um, what we've been doing is just kind of taking orders only like once every four months. Yeah, I noticed. Uh, be- <laughs> And yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I, I basically, I just, I don't really want a long build list because I like designing new stuff and coming out with it. And it's kind of co- hard to come out with like a new amp if like you have like two or three years worth of orders on the books. And it's like, well, who's gonna get it? Yeah, <laughs> all these, all these people ordered all these other things, and then. If they want the new thing, you got to change it, and it's like a just well, that makes sense. Pain, so um, <clears throat> you got to be quick yeah. We've on just that. been doing. You got to be sorry? quick on that draw, though, with the stuff that you, you're coming out with. What, what like when mean? it comes out, you got to like I, I was lucky with the the fuzz. The uh, it, it came out, and I I was literally on chicago music exchange's website looking for something else and i was just scrolling down and it was like new and i was like bam bought it and then two seconds later everyone online i didn't even know it came out and everyone online was like i can't get one i can't find one and i was like oh, I can't one. <laughs> yeah so that was not even supposed to like be a scarcity thing <laughs> no i no, i know i'm just saying that people <laughs> like them it's it's not i don't think that, that you know. oh yeah that but there's like a you know there's like a strategy there you know people will like not make enough of something just to to kind of keep the uh the scarcity up so pe- more people want it which is kind of kind of sick yeah um but we, so that the whole idea with that was like we we will always have these in stock so people can always buy one and we just like haven't been able to keep that keep up yeah again i don't think people are so. thinking that that anything weird about it I, but i think it's cool that um that, you know, people like them so much and they sort of trust, you know, when you did the, the preamp, I, I know that people were so fond of it that when you came out with another one, it sort of is just like people, you know, they, they would expect, they say, oh, well, I like that one so much that, they, that there's no way this can be bad. And then you get it and you're like, wow, it really, it's like one of the few pedals that you you know, they say it does this and then it really does that. Like you, you don't really, you get that from like <laughs> boss, you know what I mean? Like it's a digital delay and it kind of sounds cool, but like, it's not really that cool, but sometimes it's cool. And then that's what you get when you buy it. But then <laughs> when you said like, it was a, it was a, what did you say about it? It was like a fuzz that plays nice. Like that's exactly what it does. Yeah. It, it just doesn't, it's not fussy. It is not. I'm sitting right here looking at it. It's a good one. But yeah, it's it's cool. Yeah. So I think it's 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 good stuff. You're making good. Uh, yeah, you. Blake's been bragging on and on about his Vincent or you know whatever, and he's telling me, <laughs> "Oh, it's such a good sounding amp." And I said to my, I was talking to him via text message, and I said, "Hey, uh, do, you know what, what's what's this what, what's this Monarch thing?" And he was like, "Oh yeah, that's yeah, really cool." He's like, "Can you check out these videos?" So I did. And I think that uh, the demos in the dark guy, is that who did it? The demo? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. He's really nice, by the way. I like him a lot. Oh, yeah. Ryan's, Ryan's yeah. Great. I don't know him personally, but I know him online. So I don't know. Is that, are we friends or no? I mean, yeah, you guys okay. are friends. Yeah. You, did, you guys would get along. He's, he, Ryan's amazing. I really like his demos in the dark. So I watched it and I was like, wow, this, this does sound good. So then I went on the webpage and I was like, oh, yeah, it was just, try and order one. Oh, no orders. I said, Oh, no orders for me. 
okay. So I said, not making orders right now. Well, so we'll take a take a time and we'll we'll come back. And uh, but it was cool to, I don't know. It's that's kind of that's kind of nice to to see that you know you're everybody likes what you're doing and it's like working. Yeah, I'll hey, I'll I'll take it. I mean, I'm 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 still shocked every day <laughs> that we have uh, this kind of interest, but it's like. Man, I'll I'll take it, and I'm going to go with it as long as I can. I, I, I think it's, it's good. Company, it's there's a lot of pirate ship references going on uh, in in when it comes to the uh, the Benson facility and uh, pirate ships. <laughs> yeah, what? It, yeah, like he's running the thing like a pirate ship. Like he's not like it's like you know it's kind of just playing by its own rules type of situation. It's. It's pretty much decentralized manufacturing. Like, I I just have a bunch of people who are really passionate about what they're doing. And they just kind of do their own thing. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Like, we have a list that we work from, but, like, you know, something will get changed, like, in the business without me even, like, knowing about it. Like, oh, we're starting to do this, like, way to wrap this cabinet. and because it's better and then like i it's not like a big change but it's not something that i really have to manage and then the wiring people are the same way that it's kind of like we thought this looked a little tidier um and we knew you wouldn't care because it, it's not going to make any electrical difference one way or another so they're all kind of self-motivated um there's not a whole lot of like management other than like every once in a while we get like <laughs> like what why did this happen then freak out <laughs> I, I was telling them it, i'm sort of the good cop and the bad cop and the bad cop only comes around like once every couple months <laughs> for for like five five minutes until i come down again it's not like i'm screaming at him but i'm just like i feel like i'm like usually soup like pretty nice what do you mean and we're then, at a 12 ax sevens how are we at a yeah and then like sevens? I specifically told you to order them, <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> you can, you know, it's a hard thing to keep in stock. You gotta, <laughs> gotta get them. That's, that's the way to do it though. I think, you know, you have people that you trust and then they start, you know, working it and you're, you, you got them all wiring in there with no circuit board. What do you expect them to do? Nothing to do in there, but float and think. You know, yeah. You no, it's just all yep. flying in the air over there, Benson Amps, just just free falling. Hey, look, who needs a circuit board? That's pretty interesting. I still haven't seen uh, the inside of one on uh, you know with my own two eyes. But that I was trying to like, I was trying to get uh, Chris to let my friend's store be a, a dealer here in New Jersey. So. My friend asked and he was like, you know, I really like the amps, blah, blah, blah. I wanted to like, you know, sell them, blah, blah, blah. Like there's a demand, whatever. I was just basically trying to help my friend out so that I could get a peek at them and, you know, and try. And and (laughs) I was trying to get like a bunch of them in the store so I could figure out which one I wanted, you know, and I was like, okay, cool. And, and so, you know, selfishly, I just (laughs) was trying to find them in in there, but I haven't seen the, the actual insides yet. I'm very curious to. Yeah, there, there's like some photos on the internet of some very early ones that aren't. I don't think they look good, but pe- then people will send me the picture and be like, "This looks so good." I'm like, uh, "I don't know." It's not, oh, you got it. Not really our standard now, but I don't know. I'll send you a photo. No, I want to see it with. I want to smell it. I got to smell the wire and stuff. Mm, it does smell see good. It. <laughs> yeah, what? it smells nice. You well, you know how it is when you open like 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 Gibson smell like vanilla. So like when you open a newer Gibson, like the it smell it always smell yeah. See, it smells like vanilla, and then and and then Fender has a different smell, which is not vanilla, but it's also sweetish. I've heard it's the you know quote unquote toxic finish or whatever, but <laughs> it's, it smells good to me. But I keep sniffing them. Sometimes I lick them. That's what you got. That's how you get the. The full experience, the full tonal experience, because you sniff it, does a little something to your brain, and then that equals, you know, sounds better somehow. I think. I think that's how that works. Maybe that's what Billy Corgan means when he says different guitars, different colored guitars sound different. It's because it's what it does to your brain. That could be true, though. That that's a thing. 
Oh, right? Isn't that a thing? Like the actual chemical compounds, like kind of poisons your brain in a different oh, way. Oh, I Sweet. didn't think about poison. Mm. That's, that's <laughs> a different way to look at it. Just like a little bit of poison, though. You know, like a just a touch, like a cigarette. And, you know, just like boink. Good Ooh, yeah. cigarettes, yuck. Ooh. <laughs> well, so I, here, riddle me this. I took a uh, Sozo or whatever cap, and uh, and I took a Jupiter cap the other the other day, and I was you know there's so much time on my hands, and I just like cut them open. So I was like, let's see, and you know what? Same thing in there. It just looks like a bunch of foil wrapped around it. Uh, how do I? What, what, what are we doing here? But they, I feel that they sound kind of different. Yeah. But what? Why? It's the same thing in there. <laughs> I mean, I'm no, I'm no expert, but I believe I think, that you are. <laughs> no, no, not 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 with manufacturing capacitors. I I know when I hear one that I like the sound. Okay, of, but um, what I have been led to understand is first of all, the metal actually makes a difference. So depending on the the Jupiter, you know, you're, you're either working with. I'm going to just t- totally be wrong here and people are going to call me out, but I, I think there's some are the earlier ones are tin. Okay. And then the later ones are aluminum. Um, and apparently those sound different. And then the, the dielectric between them, like the thing that makes it so the metal doesn't just touch it, you know, the, the sheets of the layers yeah. don't touch. Um, that makes a big difference. Um, just the, the material, the thickness, Oh yeah, one was uh, thicker than the other. I did notice that. And then I think they they pot them in like epoxy or something like that too. And that also, I don't know why or how it makes a difference, but like you can obviously hear the sound sound between different you know caps of the same value. Yeah, like a, anyone who's ever, and that's not something that I believed when it first started. I thought it was a a bunch of a uh, I. I I, I just didn't believe it for whatever reason. I was very skeptical. It's like probably because I couldn't afford the good ones. I was like, well, the, the you know the cheap ones sound the same. Yeah. Like who cares? Um, and I've come around like fully to, yeah, caps make a really big difference. Um, and we we spent we use nowadays we use Mallory's because I think they just sound. They amazing. do sound amazing. And, uh, I will agree with you on that. And they're they're not they're not super big. Um, and, uh, some of the other caps we've used before, we've actually had some sort of, we've had some consistency issues with. Yeah. Um, and Mallory's, I mean, I can't, I've never had a dead Mallory and I've never had one that just has failed out in, out in the field. Like they're just amazing. Really? Okay. Cause I can say that I don't work for anybody. So I could say that I, I did get a, a bunch of Jupiters that were, were, were dead and, they were causing me some very crazy havoc in there, and with a a, a coupling capacitor, it was was bad. And it, and I thought that the, I ended up ripping out a whole reverb thing and bypassing it, and uh, just because I didn't know what I was doing, so I did. You know, I sort of used the shotgun approach a lot. Yeah, I I don't want to. No, you don't have to. I was just saying it on the Jupiter. No, I I just I yeah, don't. I've, you can't. I just I'm just saying it because. I still like them though. I'm I'm just going to say that. Oh, they yeah, they amazing. do. They sound good. Yeah. Cuz yeah, they sound really good. And I I have heard okay, final. Comment. You don't have to. Don't get in trouble. I've I've, I've heard that it was that was just like probably like a few weeks of production uh, because I used them for years and years before I had like a few bad ones. I was like, okay, well, can't have this. Um but and now apparently they're, you know, my buddy Tim still uses them. Oh yeah, yeah. He he uh, uses and them. he says he had, he he had a couple bad ones from that batch, but now they're totally solid. So I'm I might go back there. Um, although I I'm, I am just liking the Mallory's. They well, sound so. pretty good. I mean, I I have one of Tim's amps, and and they're chock full of Jupiters. But they uh, that that's kind of what convinced me to reorder another set, and I ordered a whole other batch and they were fine the jupiters are great yeah they yeah i mean they sound they sound fantastic they're really great and uh the the owner chris is really yeah nice guy. it was very musical sounding um because nobody in my house named brian has ever taken the whole amp apart of caps and then replaced them with a different brand just to see <laughs> you know and then not once but like 10 times it's five no one's ever done that <laughs> 
Small component oh, manufacturing like that is kind of interesting because, you know, especially at these companies, you know, a lot of people probably have this vision in their head that Jupiter or Mallory or whatever is like this big, huge operation just, you know, and I'm, I can, I have never been to either of these places, but I'm sure they're not what people expect them to be based on most music manufacturing things. And when you have a manufacturing operation like that, it can just be like one guy had an off day and he made like 200 mm-hmm. caps or 200 whatevers. And, and he's like, Oh, I forgot to, Oh no, the machine, you know, I don't know how caps are made, but like, Oh, this thing, <laughs> it's elf oh, juice, this, man. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> This thing was a little bit off and I accidentally made 200 of them and, and they all went out to, you know, 50 different builders and, you know, all of a sudden, Oh no, these, these are bad. But like it could just be like one guy had an off day, which is kind of yeah. Kinda weird. I, we that never never happens with my business, but I'm I'm familiar with the the concept. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, I don't want to. Don't send any bad ones to to uh, me over here in New Jersey when you send the whole lot of them. Um, well, if he orders them in some weird color too, that I had nothing to do with that. That's just me. Okay, <laughs> I have a thing, uh, you know, and then whatever. What's your thing? I don't want to say. I don't yeah, want to say my thing? thing because, it, like, in case it comes up ever. So I don't want to say my thing. Um, but uh, I, I like uh, yeah, stuff that comes out. Uh, well, you know, I, I mean, I feel like there's a. a, a, a it's. It, I, I. I don't know what to say here. I feel. I don't know. Like, can I say anything? <laughs> All right, fine. I'll say it. That it's it's uh, so so Frank had the pedals come out and there there I was like that's my pedal I was like this is my pedal and my friend sent it to me he goes this is your pedal I said it's not my pedal because it's not in my house and I said so now I have to order them I have to order all these pedals from from Frank over there in uh, in Seattle Frank I don't know if Frank- oh the uh, the 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 Paisley, pay, the Paisley pedal oh. that's my pedal so now I have to buy two I have to buy I have one I have one in Surf Green which is my other thing. So I have I have a couple of things. <laughs> one is Surf Green, and the other one is Pink Paisley. And uh, you can tell Paul Waller will will attest under oath to you that this is my thing. I had him do a certain guitar with a rosewood neck. And, uh, Paisley. I remember. I remember. Yeah. I think that we talked about that the oh, first yeah. time we did a podcast. I think was yeah. It's it's good. Yeah. I, I, mean, I mean, it's, it's the thing. It's the good thing. I was hoping that they would make shoes in. That's what I was going to say before with the shoes is that I hope that w- I could find somewhere that they would make me some paisley. I don't necessarily have to be pink. It could be whatever color. Um, like, but paisley, I, I really like paisley. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy that I have the illustrator file for paisley on my computer. It's cool. <laughs> I mean, cause I, I, I can, it, I kind of want it to do some amps in it. Um, That'd be cool. With, uh, and get like Saul Cole or someone to like spray around it with like pink lacquer, um, like like they did the guitars. That'd be sweet. Like they, uh, they uh, Britton Nash was telling me about that one time. Like I thought it was like a like a paint job, and he was like, "No, no, no." He's like, "It's like a, a like a paper, and and you have to like it's like a lace paper, and you have to like paint over it and around it." And he told me it was how crazy it was. Yeah, it's it's contact paper. They used to use it to. It's like what you what you'd put on your shelf to like protect your shelves from your plates. Really? Well, yeah. I, okay. Yeah. 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 Probably yeah. right. I'm sorry. Is it, is it like literally the same thing? Yeah, like that's why. Okay, I I might also someone's probably gonna say I'm wrong here too. Um, <laughs> but as far as I know, uh, it was an off the shelf pattern in the uh in the 60s for contact paper wow so just come on a roll and you cut it up and i don't know if it was like adhesive or not but you stick it on your shelves awesome and then they, you stick it on your telecaster called it well a- yeah mm-hmm. they did a uh a, 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 uh who was it someone at at the fender custom shop did a uh, a wallpaper uh telly uh, recently and it was awesome looking like it was like vintage wallpaper from like I don't even know, like the twenties or something probably sounded excellent, but, uh, it was, uh, it, it just looked really cool. Like putting wallpaper on a guitar and then finishing it. Man, there, there were so many cool patterns back then. It's, uh, I really, really wish you could 
we, we could have access to to all the materials they had. Well, now, now everything is lame. <laughs> everything. <laughs> Grass and 3D, lame. Internet, Grass lame. And 3D. Everything's lame. <laughs> everything was cooler back then, you know, like stuff. No, no, I'm just, I'm just, say, I'm just, just saying, kidding. like, there's, there's probably only like 15 grill cloths that you can buy to put on a guitar amp. Oh, tell me about it. I'm sitting here looking at one that I'm struggling with. Like it, it's just, yeah. The, 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 there's just not that many options. Well, you got cool looking ones, though. You always have cool looking ones. I, I feel like I'm. Not... Yeah. Well, so that so our one of our our most popular um, coverings, the the night moves stuff, is actually just linen. But is it night moves? I'm 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 googling it right now. It's like the gray, the gray silver kind of Supro looking. Oh stuff. yeah, yeah, okay. So that's just linen that's been glazed with uh, gold paint. Oh. And then we we buy the fabric in bolts, and then we have like a kind of water based finishing approach to actually make it into like a strong amp cover. Ooh. So this is nice. Supro. <laughs> I'm on the line. <laughs> whereas Supro back in the day, they could just buy you know vinyl yeah with you know what they couldn't buy I mean, though they, i guess that's what they do now too but back in the day i supro should have bought somebody to do the wiring it looks like a rat's nest i you know <laughs> oh god hey yeah look at all these finishes here there's a oh, wolf yeah. on one of them there's a <laughs> green tolex with checkered grill whoo mm -hmm. <laughs> you're talking mm -hmm. me i like aunt gertie i love this this is okay. This is good stuff. <laughs> Chris, do you remember when I first ordered my Monarch and how, like, I don't remember how many different flannels we tried to wrap it in? And oh, God. Like, I would go to the yeah. Pendleton wool store, which is, you know, pretty close to Chris's house at the time. And uh, I'd be like, this looks sick. This will be a Wait, great amp wrap. What? You, know? you yeah. got a Pendleton store? Oh yeah, Pendleton's and oh, yeah. a Pacific Northwest thing. Yeah, I know. I have blankets yeah. and shirts and all kinds of such around the house. Yeah. But wow, yeah, we got the store. Yeah, we got and a lot of so, outlet stores too. Yeah, so so we, the main Pendleton store is a quarter mile away from my shop. Oh, it's so cool, like it's man! Right, right across the. Ah. Oh no! Sorry, <laughs> yeah, right. Oh yeah, I'll I'll, I'll be okay. Uh, the dog's happy because I dropped a plate um, that had some egg on it on the floor. So a little egg, good, good. Yeah, she's she's going at it. Um, and I I think I can say this because I haven't signed a uh, a non disclosure yet, but we we might be working with uh, Pendleton Directly. on a on some stuff. Yeah, going forward. Oh, oh man, oh man. Yo, is there like a list? Can I get on a list, like an email thing? Like, can I get on one of those? Because for, for oh the, yeah, there's like a mailing list. I'm on. I'm on the website sure. right now. I'll sign. I'll fill out the form. What do I got to do? <laughs> you need my driver's <laughs> license or something? What do I got to do? Oh man, I mean, you could Social you could just text card, me. Nah, 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 nah. Returns, all that stuff. Just so I that. love this stuff. This is good stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, they they want they want the the good news for you is they they want. Artists, they, so it's like the marketing thing for them, right? So they they're gonna want artists to to play Pendleton. Man, I really should. Oh, dude, about you this. call me right up. I'll pay Pendleton whatever. <laughs> so you just tell me what you need me to do, and I'll play them. I'll wear the shirt. You can wrap me in a blanket. My, I will. Let me tell you about this Pendleton. All right, hold on. You want to really talk? Let's get let's get down to brass tacks. Let's do it. So let's do it. Let's get down. My best friend. And his uh, somewhere between girlfriend and wife, not sure, doesn't matter. But for my wife and I, a a um, a blanket uh, with our for our wedding with that had our our names and the and the date of our our wedding and and everything in a, in a Pendleton um, blanket that we have kept as like a, a family thing, like on display our whole marriage. And we've got like the kids have them now, and it's sort of become like a tradition that the the Pendleton blanket is like a thing for for our our house. So it's it, that that you mentioned it it actually is a real thing. So if that is a comes to fruition 
hit me up. I just learned that word. <laughs> uh, just wanted to use it. Um, yeah, S- send me a send me a note, and I'll uh, and I'll, I'll I'll I'm in. I'm in. You, you got it, buddy. This Are is exciting. For any uh, any any podcasters that also like Pendleton shirts and have like twelve of them. Are they looking for anybody like that? <laughs> Dude, we, we could just drive around Oregon City in like a box truck and just probably pick up like a, a half dozen podcasters wearing Pendleton shirts. That's not true, Blake. Don't because, let him don't let him talk down to you. It's not true. Because there's Blake, Blake doesn't believe this, but so we live in the same town now, uh, which is Oregon City, just south of Portland. Um, and everywhere I go in Oregon City. I see Blake. Like he, he's got like doppelgangers on every corner. Like just I it's they don't look exactly alike, but they kind of throw out the same vibe. They're they're usually just you know, you could you could tell they know how to change like oil in a car or something. Huh. But also probably listen to like nineties music. Uh yeah, I it's, didn't believe you for a long time because I'm like like I feel a, like a little bit like the odd man out sometimes. Uh and Cause I'm like, I'm like halfway, but I, I kind of dress like halfway between like a Portland hipster and a redneck. And so it's kind of a, yeah. it's kind of a weird situation for me. And, uh, I didn't, I didn't really believe you until I, I told my family about it. Like, I'm like, Chris says he sees, you know, my doppelganger all over town. And my sister's like, Oh yeah. Yeah. I do the same thing. She's like, I, she's like, I almost tapped <laughs> the guy on the shoulder the other day because I thought he was you. And it turns around, it was not you. <laughs> you know what? It's a thing. There's nothing wrong with fitting in, Blake. It's good. It's a good I thing. I was a unique little, uh, little snowflake, but apparently you are. I'm just like everybody else. You're unique. You are. Lovely. No one like you. I don't know anybody like you. Good stuff. <laughs> like I, I wanted to start like an Instagram page of, of uh, Blake's doppelgangers that I see around <laughs> Oregon City. <laughs> You should. That's still funny. You should try that. That would be fun. I wish you you haven't actually sent me any photographic proof. I've been waiting for like. Well, pictures. dude, I I I get there, I see one, and then it's like, I don't I don't want to be the guy just taking you know discreetly snapping pictures of you know other men. Well, you just gotta you just you know? gotta pretend you're on the phone. You know, you just like I'm talking on the phone, and you just bring your thumb up and. Take a little snap. I've never done that before. I've never taken pictures. Of- Wait, how do you <laughs> think I get pictures? Uh, like my so like we we. I don't know if you guys have have. Uh, I don't know how old your your kids are, Blake. But but one of mine is eight, and when you're eight, you're not allowed to take pictures. Apparently, uh, okay. so uh, my son is like, you, you know, if I if I like want to take a picture of him, it's it's like a I have to be a, a detective and sleuth around and. So I, you just discre- hold up the phone. I'm looking up something, seeing how the uh, whatever's doing. Uh, okay, snap! And you got to get him. You got to catch him because he won't. He won't. That's how you do it. You got to just, you know, you can take pictures, uh, but you got to just make sure you're like looking at. Oh, what's the weather today? Snap! Or you're like you got glasses, you know? Or else I would. There'd be missing gaps from my son's life from six to who knows when he's gonna let me take pictures again <laughs> of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Stop my, taking pictures, my, dad. Five. my oldest is five and and he's still down to like you know clown he'll still like you know make a dumb face for me when i want to take a picture so yeah that's, a, that's Chris the way. Has got older kids when do they start letting you take pictures again don't you don't your kids older? um i mean all, all my kids like all my kids don't mind pictures um, I mean, they always swipe, swipe my phone. And I'll find like forty-five pictures that they took of each other. <laughs> um, but I, I will say, so. Relatedly, uh, my my son Leo, between about the ages of six and nine, when when you asked him to smile for a picture, he would just you know you wouldn't even ask him; he would just do this. He. He d- he just got the most deranged look on his face because he was trying he was trying to smile, um, and it didn't look anything like a smile. It just looked like looked like he had just consumed some sort of neurotoxin or something. Was, so we don't actually have any good pictures of Leo from you know six to nine or whatever. I feel you on that one. Hey, can you smile? And it's like some grimace. 
I mean, it's kind of hard. Like, I'm not very good at smiling in pictures. I'm I, like all, all all the pictures, the family photos of me. I, I look at it. And I'm like, that's not a real smile. Like that's that's that. Look at look at that. And then there's occasionally there'll be like a candid one where I was laughing. I'm like, that's a real smile. Look at this other one. Looks like a murderer. Like this isn't good. It's not a good thing. I don't know how to smile. Yeah. I've gone through several different uh, stages of you know, because you know I I I think about the the strategy of smiling in, in a picture. You just practice in the mirror or whatever. It's it's not like I'm photographed all the time, but I. I went through a stage in my late twenties where I, my smile was just showing my teeth. <laughs> <laughs> like a lion? <laughs> yeah. Just like, it looked like I was just baring my teeth for some reason. <laughs> and yeah, there's, there's a lot of unusual, you know, late twenties photos. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Well, boys, we, we've been on the horn for 73 minutes and I could, I could literally do this all day, but I have a feeling that you guys probably have like stuff to do. I'm in. The, I have to go back to making my uh, record of things. Yeah. I probably got to put some pants on. That's a good you idea. Don't have to. You don't have to. I mean, let's be honest. You're not going anywhere. True. Uh, true. That's true. Do you guys well, get my my amp up? Actually, did you get your you vaccines that. yet or no? No. No. I'm I'm available. The I'm eligible on the fifth. Okay. Yeah. Um. So in 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 a few days, yeah. and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I'm waiting. So I, I got an appointment on the 16th, so I'm still waiting. They told me that I'm the yeah. I'm the, the, literally the last person, basically. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> you. They're like, we will literally do everyone here except for you. That, that's what. It, that's kind of the way they put it. They're like, you, you, everyone can get it, but you, because you're fine. <laughs> I'm like, what? But that, okay. Whatever. I guess <laughs> there are people that are needing it more than I do. I'll be fine. Sure. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course. <clears throat> yeah. Te- technically, I, I I'm a, what do they what do they call it? Essential worker because I work in electronics manufacturing. Um. So, yeah. but but yeah, if I didn't do that, I, it would be you know probably halfway through the summer or later, <clears throat> where I would be eligible. So yeah, I'm in my early thirties. Uh you know, healthy as far as I'm aware. And I work by myself. They don't consider me like super at risk. It seems <laughs> so, you know, so it goes, I don't know. Is podcasting essential? Probably not. Probably people could probably get by. <laughs> uh, it depends on who you ask. I think it's pretty essential. I, th- I think it was probably pretty essential during the pandemic. So people could hear like the sound of another person. Yeah. Yeah. The, the well, and also, yeah. The topical thing, you know, you're doing, you're doing the, you're doing the, uh, you know, you're doing the Lord's work. You're telling us all about the pedals we need to buy. That's right. Everybody you know what I mean? Know. Just, yeah. About the new Benson, what, whatever he's got coming out. Cause I definitely will be talking about it when it does. So, well, I mean, I think you're essential to me, Blake. Oh, See, that's a nice Chris. thing. That's a nice thing that's to funny. say. Thank you, boys. <laughs> I like this. You guys are so nice. All right, everybody. Let's, uh, let's wrap this one up. Well, wonderful, Chris, wonderful Chris. talking. Oh, yes. Yeah, it was fun. It was a really good time. I'm glad we did this. This is Brian's idea, so I'm glad we actually did it. This was fun. Hey! Man. Hey, good hey. idea. This is, a, this, is kind <laughs> of a, this is the first podcast I've ever done without having, like, at least three beers. Oh, there you go. See? I had literally zero beers. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. All right. Good yeah, work, excellent. everyone. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Take care. Be good. For Chris and Brian, as always, folks, good luck and good tones. There you go, folks. That's it for this episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, hanging out with us, and having a good old time. Make sure you check out Chris's amps. He's on Instagram at Benson Amps, and his work is available at BensonAmps.com. And make sure you check out Brian's music. It's available anywhere you want to stream. Go buy a record. Seriously, go buy a record. It's great stuff. You're going to love it. I loved his last solo album uh, very, 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 very much. It's called Local Honey. I have it on orange vinyl, and it is a great record. So go check that out along with all of his other work. And last but not least, if you like this show, please 
consider using one of the links that we have available if you're going to be buying any gear or equipment soon. If you go to tonemob.com slash Sweetwater, you can buy anything that Sweetwater carries through that link, and a little bit will help come back and support the show. But they don't carry everything, and you can also find things on Reverb.com. So if you go to tonemob.com slash Reverb for all your Reverb purchasing needs, that helps out as well. Additionally, if you listen to this, there's a good chance that you play stringed instruments, and there's a good chance that is a guitar or a bass. And you can check out my friend Stringjoy, and we have a link for that as well, tonemob.com slash Stringjoy. That is helping us explore a new program over there, and once we get this testing done, we'll be able to roll this out to other creators and potentially help them out as well. So check that out, tonemob.com slash Stringjoy. That would be very helpful. All right, until next week, please share this with a friend, share it with a family member. If you enjoyed this episode, go back and check out the earlier episodes with Brian, especially the first one that was recorded on the back of a bus, and it was a lot of fun. And if you check out Chris's first episode, that's actually episode two of the podcast. We recorded it up in his sweaty attic in uh, southeast Portland many, many years ago. So go check that out. And uh, yeah, I think that's enough blabbing for now. I'll talk to you very, very soon. Bye-bye. One last thing before we totally sign off here. I just want to remind you that if you do any shopping at Stringjoy, that's Stringjoy Guitar Strings made in Nashville, that will help me out as well. As I've said for years, I'm heavily involved in that company, and I really do think they're making the best products on the market. So if you would like to try custom strings, go to tonemob.com slash stringjoy and check them out today. I seriously, seriously, seriously love what the team down there is doing. I help them out with all kinds of things. And by you supporting them, you are also supporting me as well. And hey, you need some strings, so why not get some custom strings just for your guitar and playing style? Again, the link for that is tonemob.com slash stringjoy, and that will take you right to their website, and you can do all your shopping through there, and that will help everyone involved out. So thank you very much. Talk to you next time. We are brought to you by the wonderful folks at Gun Street Wiring Shop. Yes, Gun Street Wiring Shop. I've talked about them before. I used to say based out of Bend, Oregon, but guess what? Sean moved to my neck of the woods. Sean's in Portland. Sean is awesome and has helped me with a bunch of stuff lately. And if you have wiring needs for your guitar, he can help you too. If you want to get weird with it, he can get weird. If you just need to spruce things up a little bit, there's your guy. He takes all the guesswork out of doing your guitar wiring, and he makes it simple, and his customer service is top-notch, and I can't say enough good things about Gunstory as a company. I really respect Sean and what he's all about, and the product is top-notch. I've got three different guitars that now have Gun Street harnesses in them, and I could not be happier. So go to GunStreetWiringShop.com and check them out.